Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time, you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression. 12 divided by 2 and then multiply it on the value in parentheses, which is 3 minus 1. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here, division, multiplication, and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second, and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate 3 minus 1. And obviously, the answer is 2. The big question is, what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing, because it shows multiplication first and then division. But in our case, we need to do division first and divide 12 by 2, and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by 2, we get to 6, and the final expression we need to solve would be 6 multiplied by 2. So the correct answer here is 12. Let me give you a quick hint. Even if you don't know the answer, you can always use a calculator. Most modern calculators do support expressions. Let me demonstrate. For example, if you type calculator in Google, it shows the calculator which you can use to solve the expressions. You can preview expression and once you hit the equal sign, it calculates it for you. And you can see that the correct answer here is 12. Another alternative is to use Microsoft Excel, which is available on almost any Windows machine. Here you can enter the expression right inside any cell. And Microsoft Excel will perform the calculations. So, did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. I'm excited to share with you a cool question, which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the 2 by 3 matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the 2x3 matrix. Five shapes are present, and one shape is missing. You are presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape, which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in the sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. The types of questions you're looking at is very frequently used on a test. Typically, you're being asked to determine the item which does not belong to the group. And you're presented with multiple items. In our choice, we have choices A, B, C, and D. Each item is represented as a square which contains multiple different items inside. And you need to determine the item which does not belong to this particular pattern or sequence. Do you see the answer? Please take a look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds. 
maybe 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can go and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, there is always a pattern that you need to detect to answer these types of questions correctly. And a lot of times, there are items that are designed to confuse you. So let me first walk you through the items that are designed to confuse you. You have small circles, and there are four small circles in each of the square. And the small circles do not have any patterns. We also have triangles. Some squares have two triangles, and some squares only have one. But there is no pattern here. The pattern is actually defined by the half circle. And as you can see, all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. You see this in the shapes A, B, and C. But in shape D, half circle is placed in a different location. It is in the bottom middle of the square. This is why the item that doesn't belong to the group is the choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. The pattern here is that all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. But half circle in the shape D is placed in a different place than the others. The half circle there is in the lower part of the square. This is why the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C, and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions on the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles, and in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern, and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black white, shape B black white, shape C white black, and then shape D white white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you get tested on your ability to analyze charts and graphs. In this question, we see a pie chart, which is broken down into two parts. You see parts presented in the different colors, white, red, blue, gray, and black. And the question asks you how many cars. Let's read the question more carefully. 
The pie chart shows the colors of the cars past traffic light in one hour period. A total of 250 cars passed the traffic light. The number of white cars is represented by an angle of 90 degrees. Approximately how many white cars passed the traffic light? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 57. Choice B, 60. Choice C, 63. And choice D, 67. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. A lot of times, answer given to you as part of the question. And this is one of those cases. Pie chart is represented by a 360 degree circle. We know that 90 degree angle represents number of white cars past the traffic light. And 90 degrees is a quarter of 360. To do the calculations, you need to divide 90 by 360, which is a quarter or 0 0.25. We need to build the proportion to calculate the final value. If total number of cars past the traffic light is 250, and it's represented by a 360 degree circle, to calculate the number of white cars passed, we need to multiply 250 by 0 0.25. So the end result is 62.5. The closest value among the answers is 63. So the correct choice here is choice C, 63. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the interesting question that might get you puzzled. You need to explain why the calculation that you see is correct. And you have a calculation 1 plus 1 equals 10. Give yourself 10 seconds and let me give you a hint. Try to think out of the box and try to see what else can be going on here besides just the calculations. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Typically, when we do calculations, we use 10 digits in the decimal system. We use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But here, calculations are done in the binary system. And there are only two digits in the binary system, 1 and 0. So what happens when you get calculation in the binary system and you add 1 plus 1, what looks 10 in the decimal system looks like 2 in the binary system. So the correct answer, this calculation is possible because of the binary system. Let me demonstrate this to you. If you launch calculator in Windows and then switch to the programmer calculator, you can choose different systems. By default, it's a decimal system. But if we switch to binary and then we can add 1 plus 1 equals what looks like 10 in reality is 2 in the binary system. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. If you like solving word puzzles, this question might be for you. You need to look at the nine letters on the left and determine what word can you form using all the letters in the box. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds and see what's the best way to solve the problem. I'm going to give you a quick hint. Sometimes, as I move from left to right, or from right to left, or diagonally, or up and down, you might get an idea of what kind of word you can form. So hopefully this tip will help you here. Do you recognize the pattern? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, there are many words that can be formed with the letters in these nine boxes. But the best word that we can form contains all the letters and contains no duplicates. If we think of the sequence and start in the middle and then go around counterclockwise, we see that we can form a word brilliant, B-R-I-L-L-I-A-N-T. So the correct answer is brilliant. Hopefully you've nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. 
in the first column we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2, by multiplication, get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there's no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic how would you calculate how many seconds are there in a year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question. It gives you some laugh and you now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This is one of my favorite questions, and there is a very high chance that you will get it on the assessment test. How many triangles do you see? You're presented with the shape on the left. There is a large triangle, and there are also lines inside of this large triangles. You have four different choices. Choice A, nine triangles. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 24. One triangle is highlighted in red, but there are a lot of other triangles do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds. I would recommend 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. You can pause this video to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. I am going to continue and reveal the correct solution so we can get to the answer together. I counted 12 triangles in this picture. Is this what you got too? Let me show them all for you. I'll start with the smaller triangles and then go to the medium-sized ones, and then go to the large ones. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we can all learn from your perspective. Hopefully you nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. A lot of times you might get a question which asks you to determine the sales increase. You're typically presented with the graph which shows lines that represent different sales. In our case, we are represented with the chart that shows sales of cardio equipment from January to June, sales of bikes represented by the blue line, sales of elliptical represented by the orange line, and sales of treadmills are represented by the gray line. The question asks you to determine largest sales increase. Specifically, you need to determine which period represents the largest one month's number of item sales increase for cardio equipment sales. You have four different choices. Choice A, bikes from January to February. Choice B, bikes from February to March. Choice C, ellipticals, March to April. And choice D, treadmill, May to June. Do you see the answer? You may need to look closely to determine the correct answer for this question. Give yourself five to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? We're going to move forward and cover the answer for this problem and get to the solution together. To answer this question, we need to look at the graph closely. For each data point on the graph, we need to determine the actual value. And once we have all the numbers, we need to answer the question by looking at the differences for equipment sales from months to months. Specifically, in this case, you need to evaluate four different choices that are represented by answers A through D. Let's do it together. Based on the chart, bike sales increased by two from January to February, and the increase was from five to seven items sold. Bike sales also increased by two from seven to nine between February and March. Elliptical sales, on the other hand, increased by seven from March to April, jumping from two to nine. And treadmill sales increased by four between May and June, going up from two to six. So the correct answer here is choice C, elliptical sales from March to April, because jump was by seven from two to nine. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here is the very interesting question from the real test some of you might find challenging. Despite being tricky, you will have a lot of fun trying to find the solution. Because this question tests your imagination, spatial thinking, logical thinking, and attention to details. Please take a look at the picture and identify all triangles in this picture. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be the right time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 10 seconds. This is typically about as much time you'll get in the real test. Did you come up with the answer? Let me give you a tip. Keep in mind though, that in the real test, nobody's gonna give you any suggestions. But make sure to consider the possibility of one shape being inside the other. Now let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. It is mind-boggling, but there are 35 triangles here. Can you believe it? Certainly was a huge surprise to me as I was discovering them. Let me draw all of them for you. I will start by drawing small border triangles. There are 10 of them. Please count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now let's do next ten triangles. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. 
And now, let's do next five. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Another five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then the last five. 31, 32, 33, 34, and the last one is 35. Do you think we missed any? Please make sure to leave your comment and let us know if there is even more. Hopefully you nailed this question. And now learn how to answer similar questions on the test. Here's the interesting question you see sometimes on the test. It checks your knowledge of verbal reasoning and understanding of the problem. And some people might argue that it tests your sense of humor as well. Young professional realized that pockets of his jeans were totally empty. But then he realized there was something else in there. How is it possible? Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. This is typically what you get on the test. Also, I'm gonna give you a hint. Please take a close look at the picture to see if you might see something unusual. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. And the solution is very simple. There was a hole in the pocket of the young professional's jeans. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.